What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're talking about Scream 6 in this video here again today. It's been a while since I've done a solo video about Scream 6. So I wanted to do one related to this interview that Guy Busick and James Vanderbilt recently had with a channel named Real School. Shout out to you if you're hearing this. I'll leave a link to the video in the description if you want the entire full context because the interview itself is like over 22 minutes long. They actually even touch on Final Destination 6 for those of you who want to maybe hear some hear a little nugget about what Final Destination 6 is being is having has been going like for a uh, guy busick so just to jump into what they were talking about they had a lot to say about scream 2 and the influence it's had with them uh as we clearly saw or at least i clearly saw a lot of scream 2 influence going into what they presented to us when scream 5 and i'm expecting them and imagining that same influence will be heavily seen in scream 6 so they talked about that talked about what we could expect from scream 6 although that was very minor and i'll get to that in a second they talked about that, talked about Dewey's death. They even made a comment saying that Dewey is their favorite character. So for people out there who are trying to always, you know, knock them for how they killed Dewey. Again, you can knock them for how they killed Dewey, I guess. But don't when you kill off characters you love, that doesn't mean that they don't mean something to you. That doesn't mean that you went out of your way to try to disrespect them or anything like that. Just to jump, jump on into it, they again started off by talking about how Scream 2 had a lot of influence on not only Guy but Jamie as well. Uh, these again are our duo of writers responsible for Scream 5. They revealed this in a recently new interview. Now, they did have some other exciting things that again I'm going to talk about as this video progresses. Dewey's theme being present in Scream 5 and again Dewey's shocking death for well for some it was a shocking death <laughs> that was a clear sign that scream 2 was thought of when writing that fifth movie that we now know we have i don't know when this interview was actually done because we know scream 6 just wrapped they also went over how they felt that the requel approach in scream 5 was the right thing to do with this scream movie because of how the others had addressed current trends in horror or made fun of themselves uh, as a result now toxic fandom was a newish trend that they wanted to bring in because of how scary that could actually be now me and maybe many of you on an individual level might not have found that to be scary uh, at this point if you're a diehard screen fan i don't think you find many things addressed in this franchise to be overly scary or something that in something that causes fear in you but on an individual level again while that might not be scary it is disturbing i mean seriously you have a person so in love with a piece of fiction or two people that it becomes their entire identity and they are detached from reality we know it's not something i i think any of us have ever seen get to the point of what sam and or what amber and richie to do do in scream five but you know those people who exist online and they make all of these fake profiles and they target certain people working on a film or a tv show that they don't like and harass them you know stuff like that it's just completely ridiculous that the show or the movie has become their entire identity that they snap like that that is a little bit disturbing so i'm glad they addressed that and brought that into the mix for screen five so they addressed that billy appearing on screen was again not supernatural i know that's been addressed in the past because as most people interpreted we were just seeing sam's psyche manifest itself they had nothing to do with being supernatural james actually chimed in saying that kevin was up for them breaking new ground and taking swings by having billy appear as he did so james said that dewey's death was a way to remind remind us that no one is safe and this was something i think they brought in mind or started to have in mind very early on going off of what they had already seen previously from scream three and four playing it safe they didn't want to do that going into scream five so they wanted to do something similar to randy in scream two and he even said that dewey was his favorite character or his and guy's favorite character so why did they kill him and i like the response that he gave the response that they had for that in regards to why they killed Dewey is because James himself just admitted that as a screenwriter he understood that there comes a time when you have to kill your babies to make something work and that's the mentality they had even though his death wasn't taken lightly I like that comment because again it shines a light on them as writers and how they felt and what I also like is how when they're asked about Dewey's death the look on their face at least to me is an indication that they did not take pleasure in writing this death it is something that was they felt was necessary and as a writer they wanted to take that extra risk many of you might not be in agreement with dewey's death and that's fine but to say that because they chose to write him to die that they are not fans of the legacy cast or the characters that is that makes no sense 
You can be a fan of someone and understand when it's time for them to go and decide that you want to see them go. Because, again, they're the ones getting to live out their their fan dream, not us. They're the ones writing these movies. I, again, probably would not have killed Dewey. I probably would have kept him alive. I probably would keep all of them alive all the way through. But that's also probably why I'm not the one in the writer's room. <laughs> it's probably also why I'm not the one in the writer's room. So I like that response that he gave. So and. They also were convinced that there was no other way to get Sydney back. I like that, too, because, again, the most convincing thing thus far would or the most hard hitting thing, I guess, because you could have done something else. But the most overly convincing and hard hitting thing, surefire way to get her back, kill Dewey. Nothing but kill Dewey. So because if everyone always survives, they said it becomes static and then the franchise is branded as the same old thing. And then when asked if we can count on the no one being safe approach in Scream 6, James said he won't answer that because he says, because if he says one thing is going to sound like this to some people, or if he says this other thing, it'll sound like that to some people. And again, I, I like that. I like what he said there. He also reiterated that they love Scream and they hope that this is known from the movies they delivered in both five and the upcoming Scream 6. This is, again, a fun interview that they had. Scream 6, again, has wrapped. Now, going into Scream 6, the fact that he decided to, of course, not address whether or not they'll go into the movie with that still no one is safe approach. I mean, you already kind of have that established because you killed Dewey in Scream 5. The only other shocking thing you could do is to continue killing off legacy characters. Only if it's done in a way that is respectable and done in a way in which it's relevant to whatever plot you might be trying to set up or something that is again maybe something that not only you were in agreement with but the person who portrays said legacy character was in agreement with as well that's not to say that all the fans would have necessarily be on board with it but i you know the whole is no one safe the only person here that would not be safe is gail weathers <laughs> sydney uh, for a lot of people they don't believe she's back i still believe she's back and i yes i know what nevis said i still believe she's back but uh we'll see what happens with scream six and how this no one safe being approach impacts scream six or anything else with the movie let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications and there's a video in the description i'll have links to my social media accounts on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video